Thanks. Um, the accent he's talking about is basically an Indian accent, uh, which is uh, changing into a Canadian accent slowly. Uh, so if you don't uh, understand something, you can ask me later. So today I want to talk about paper. We love paper. Uh, we've been using paper from all the way from cardboard boxes to banknotes to printed media and love letters. Uh, there's something uh, about paper that we enjoy. Maybe it's texture or the feel of uh, how a fresh book uh, feels when you hold it in your hand. Um, of course, uh, unlike digital media that we are uh, using a lot nowadays, paper has uh, certain limitations. One is, of course, it is static. Once I start using paper, I uh, cannot really go back and modify something. I cannot reuse uh, paper in any way. Um, and it's not convenient for me to store, retrieve, or even share information uh, in comparison to a computer when I do it with paper. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, so I think at this stage, um, I would like to argue that technology can probably reinvent paper so that we take advantages of those, some of those qualities that we like about paper, but still bring in the aspect of new technology, uh, or how do I say, digital media when you're interacting. So when I was doing my master's, a uh, few of us were uh, brainstorming and coming up with ideas of how we can reduce the usage of paper on campus. Our whole uh, idea was to come up with a few interesting concepts and probably even build one of them. The first concept we came up was a newspaper vending machine. I know the design looks like uh, something came out of Looney Tunes, but uh, the idea here was you have newspaper that's uh, printed with reusable uh, ink, and uh, end of the day, if you put back your newspaper, next day you can come back and uh, uh, the news of that day is printed uh, on the same paper. Therefore, you're not using any new paper, you're uh, reusing it, and you also don't feel guilty when you're pouring over your large sheets of paper. While this was an interesting idea, it was not really practical. So we started thinking about solutions uh, in a different direction. Uh, we designed a computer app which uh, lets, uh, lets you interact with information your documents, your books, or any uh, textual uh, text media in a very seamless fashion, just how you do it with paper. Uh, the idea here was simple, that if uh, the experience of interacting with digital content is enhanced, depending on whatever you're using, could be a laptop or tablet, the need for you to reach out for that uh, print button gets reduced. However, we did have another pet project that we all loved. We were super excited about this. This was a concept uh, device uh, which uh, we hoped would be using a flexible display. It mimics a scroll. You can roll it out when you want to interact with it. You can roll it up, and uh, it's lightweight, so you can carry it around. And you can interact with it in every possible way that you would with your regular computer. So we were super excited. And around the same time, we found out that uh, physicists uh, in our uh, uh, university were actually researching on flexible displays. This was like a few black blocks away. So we thought, wouldn't it be like awesome to get hold of a working flexible display, build a prototype that looks something like this, and actually show that uh, we, how we can reduce paper and how it would be easy or intuitive to use. So I'm sure this is the point of time where, where you're thinking, this is such an awesome underdog story, right? A bunch of students come up with an idea, and uh, we just uh, collaborate with physics, physicists around us, and we solve world problems. Unfortunately, that's not the case. We never got hold of any flexible displays. Because what I didn't know back then was the fact that there were only a handful of uh, flexible displays around the world, and also none of them were mature enough for us to be a even able to use as a prototype. There's a silver lining to the story. We did build a prototype, but with cereal boxes. <laughs> so. Uh, the other thing I wasn't aware at the same time was also that researchers at Queen's University were uh, thinking of devices that use flexible displays. They were uh, designing paper computers. Uh, David Hallman in 2005 
uh, showed off paper windows. This was basically uh, sheets of paper projected with uh, computer interfaces so that we could uh, simulate and understand how it would be to interact with a paper computer. Uh, I was uh, for, uh, fortunate enough to work with this team, uh, Dr. Vertigal and the team uh, to work on flexible displays, and we were able to build uh, paper computers, and these were real flexible displays, not serial boxes. Um, before I even show you the prototypes that we built, um, I want to go back and talk about uh, why flexible displays are relevant to our discussion of paper. We have all these devices that are really powerful. Our devices are getting smaller, faster, but still I would argue that there's something unnatural about the way we interact with our computers. For one thing, all our interaction is mediated by a keyboard, mouse, or a touchscreen, which is not the case when you interact with your everyday objects. For example, you can pick objects up, you can move them around, and you can interact with them in three dimensions. And also, our interactions are limited to this window through which our two-way dialogue happens with our computers. Computers are not really that forgiving if you're multitasking, having a lot of documents and applications, um, or probably you would have to have massive uh, monitor setups to do what you want. So it's no surprise that we always tend to go back to paper, no matter how powerful our computers are, because there's, uh, as I was saying, there's something familiar about paper. And uh, for example, if you're holding a book, you have the tactile feedback uh, of how big a book is. If you're thumbing through, you know where exactly you are within the book, and you can feel the texture of the uh, pages. Uh, you can organize your information in however way you want. You can spread them out, you can pile them, you can stack them, you can have a bunch of folders and cabinets, or you can go OCD and uh, do whatever you want. <laughs> So, and another interesting thing where I was talking about multitasking is also that you can access information, multiple information at the same time. Uh, with your computer, if you are switching between different tasks, different documents, it's not that convenient, but with paper you can access all of them at once. So you get uh, the concurrent access to information. And paper provides with a, a richer way of uh, reading and interacting because because of its reflective properties, uh, paper is easier on the eye, and also you can hold your documents in, uh, in any angle or distance that's convenient to you. So I would argue that the emerging technology of uh, flexible displays are at an interesting intersection where we take advantage of some of these properties of paper, its thinness, lightweight, and flexibility, and add in the advantage of using the digital medium um, of uh, computers. So the first uh, prototype that uh, we worked on was called uh, Display Stacks. And uh, in Display Stacks, what we wanted to explore was uh, the uh, concept of piling. We all, uh, at least most of us who use a lot of paper, we have uh, piles like this on, uh, on our desks. Uh, I have a lot of arguments with my wife about this because she thinks it looks messy. But uh, I would argue, uh, as a scientist, that there's, a, there's an order to this chaos because I know exactly where my things are, and also there's a, an awareness. For example, a document that's closer to me is something I'm working on. A document that is uh, down below on the pile is something older that I won't be accessing right now. So with display stacks, we wanted to do, uh, we wanted to use in all these uh, nuances and try to see how we can use piling as a way of interacting with digital information. So display stacks is a paper computer which has uh, multiple flexible displays. And uh, each display is around three and a half inch. And uh, this is uh, made of e-ink, which is the same technology as our e-book readers. So um, it's similar to paper when you uh, view it. And we added a bunch of sensors to it, uh, but while still retaining their thinness, so that uh, the displays could detect each other. For example, if you're loosely uh, holding them together as a pile, or organizing them, uh, uh, bringing them together as a stack or uh, even be aware that one display is overlapping the other. So let me show you how the interactions would be if we take advantage of uh, all these uh, uh, configurations that I just showed. If I have a bunch of spreadsheets, I can spread out my information. The system is aware, so it just shows me the thumbnails rather than the full view. I take advantage of the thumbnails to pick the document I want and switch between contexts. So this reminds me of the way I hold my deck of cards. 
So let's imagine that I spread out in a slightly different way. I have a lot more screen real estate. I can take advantage of this to show a menu or probably even like a table of contents, something so that I can navigate with my information that is in that stack that I'm holding in my hand. And there's something that we can do with computers that we can't do with paper, and which is what we've tried here, is if you have three chapters of a book, I, if I want to sort them, I bring them together, I bend them all at once, and the documents get sorted in the order you want. Not only that, you can flip through the pages of one chapter or flip through the chapters of the whole book just by bending, which has that tactile feedback and feels a little more natural when you're interacting. So uh, after display stacks, uh, we wanted to work with larger displays with a higher resolution and uh, explore paper computing on a larger scale, which uh, is closer to paper. And uh, with uh, paper, uh, so we went ahead with paper tab. With paper tab, what we were exploring was the way we organize information spatially with our papers. Uh, for example, um, the documents that I am using are closer to me. The documents that I'm not using right now, but I might be needing uh, pretty soon, are at arm's reach and are probably piled up. Piled up, and all the documents that I have filed away are for long-term storage that I won't be using. Um, so paper tab is a paper computer which has uh, multiple large thin film flexible displays. Again, uh, these displays have sensors attached to them so that they can sense each other as well as sense the user. And uh, why don't I show you how it feels when you interact with it with a, uh, with a small couple of scenarios. I would probably need uh, the camera so that I can show you from the perspective of a user. So um, what I have here is three sheets of paper. Let me just say sheets of paper because they are thin, they are lightweight, and um, I would argue you can't do something like this with your iPad. So um, I have my bookshelf here. I have a bunch of books that I want to pick up and read. Uh, with my regular tab tablet, I would just pick up this uh, uh, paper and uh, select the book I want to read and start doing that. But uh, let me take advantage of the fact that I have another sheet of paper so I don't lose sight of my bookshelf. I just pick up the document and it gets opened up. Now I'm seeing a thumbnail overview and I can crack the book open just by bending it and I can flip through the pages, just like I'm flipping through the pages uh, of a regular book. And the system is aware now that uh, I'm using it so it is showing me everything in full view. If I place the document away, it goes into sleep and goes into a mode where I can see just the overview of the chapters that I'm looking at. And I can bring back the book and bend it and go back to where I was when I was interacting with it. Uh, more often when we are interacting with uh, uh, paper or even our computer, we are overwhelmed with information. We want large screen real estate to be able to take in a lot of information. Uh, with a computer, it's really not possible unless you upgrade to a better monitor. But with the paper tab, what I can do is I can pick up another empty sheet of paper. I can bring them together and uh, with all luck, what you'll see is it becomes a two-page ebook reader. And I can interact with it uh, as if I'm having, so even if I put it away, and even though this is uh, now independent of each other, they are behaving like one book. So I'm flipping through the pages, and I'm flipping through the pages here as well. So let me uh, show you another example, uh, which is a lot more common when we use uh, computers. Uh, uh, here I have my uh, email inbox. I have a photo, when I put it away, which turns into a photo album because it's closed and it's aware that I'm not actively using it. And uh, I just got a new mail. I want to read my mail. I still want to keep an eye on my inbox though. So again, just as I did with uh, my bookshelf, I pick up an empty sheet and I pick up the email that just came. Now, the same concept, I can flip through the, page, uh, flip through the emails that I received. Uh, let me just uh, go back to the email that I got. This person wants me to send them a picture that I was just viewing a while ago. So in a traditional computer, there's always this uh, concern of how I transfer information between two devices. If I have two tablets, do I email it? 
uh, or for example, between two monitors, I'd probably, what I would do is drag and drop information. Uh, but with this, what I would do is I would first pick up the photo that they want. I have my email right here. I just tap it and the email, uh, the photo gets attached and my response is ready to be sent away. Um, and probably one last thing I want to show you just to give you an idea of um, the spatiality of information. I just repurposed uh, uh, all my displays now so that I have um, an application folder that I want to uh, use. I just uh, open my map application so that I want to plan a route. Here we have Kingston. Um, I want to plan a route, but again, my screen is limited. Uh, so I just uh, use another display. I take advantage of it and make it a larger screen so I have a larger map, perceiving as if there's a virtual map under the desk. And uh, so if I want to know where Ottawa is, I have a vague idea that Ottawa is somewhere northeast of Kingston. So I just move this display slightly further up and uh, Wi-Fi willing, we'll be able to see Ottawa. And there you go. So, so uh, to wrap things up, I'm really excited about technology. I'm really excited about uh, uh, seeing how we can use new technologies and how uh, we, uh, to interact with digital information in better ways. I've shown you a few ways uh, we have been um, few examples of work we have been doing at our lab to uh, take advantage of these new technologies. Uh, the spark that I want to highlight in all these ideas is this. We no longer need to adapt to technology. Technology is adapting to us right now. Thank you.